Welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at the movement of the wrist in the early phase of the backswing and then we're going to connect that to how it can help players with their club release in the downswing. Thanks once again for tuning in. So today we're looking at the movement of the wrist early in the backswing and how it very much can connect to improving a player's release in the downswing. I'm shooting this video in response to a question from David Lee who is a follower of mine on Skillist. So, on Skillis now, you can now follow a coach, and I'm posting twice a week, just simple uh, one to two minute tips to help players improve their game. So if you don't want to miss any videos that I put out, go over to Skillis. You may have to download the app if you haven't already, follow me, and then uh, yeah, twice a week you'll get messages in there with the updated and new videos that I'm putting out there. So let's get back on track with the topic today. And Dave's specific question was, when would a player feel as though the, they get to their wrist set in backswing? So when it comes to wrist and we're looking at different players, it's very hard to set in stone when a player would feel that they've set their wrist. But what I can do today is provide a little bit of overview as to a couple of checkpoints that, are, that would be good checkpoints for the majority of players and how those checkpoints and the movement of the wrist connects to better club delivery. Because what I found over time from coaching players is as good as you can make it look through backswing, if the player's not hitting it better, if they're not delivering the club better, there really isn't much value placed on the movement through backswing by the player. So you always need to be tying it to the player hitting it better. Um, okay, so to go back to Dave's question, when would a player feel as though they set the wrist? So I would say most viewers here watching will see wrist set as far as the angle between the lead arm and the club. So that's just for today what we're going to use as far as when a player would feel that. So first of all, Players' wrists are configured just just wildly different. We're just so different anatomically, all of us in many different ways. And at the wrists, when I look at the 3D graphs, that's they're, they're some of the graphs where you see the most variation. Even between good golfers, you can, you know, you got one good golfer that you know shoots in the 60s regularly compared to another good golfer that also shoots in the 60s regularly. And the movement of the wrist can be just so different. And I mean, just using grip as example and the way players hold the club can just be so different. So the starting point that the wrists are in um, is just a very different spot. But a couple of checkpoints here. I find that if players do a good job with their sequence and takeaway, um, that is very helpful to getting the wrist into a good position. So, first of all, let's just talk a little bit about the takeaway sequence. So, obviously, assuming on a very good setup here, the checkpoints I use are is that by the time the club head gets outside the trail foot, the club head has passed the hand. So, very common to see a lot of players drag the club um, out there, but I like to see the club head pass the hand by the time the club get, head gets outside your trail foot. So that's my right foot for me. So first letting the club head pass the hands. Then we're gonna let the hands pass the trail elbow. So my feel here is my trail hand has just got outside my trail elbow and you might notice that's why the club, has, the club shaft is parallel to the ground. So for me to get the club parallel to the ground, the club head is gonna pass my hands by the time the club head is outside the foot and then the hands are going to pass the elbow right around at the time when the club is parallel to the ground so from a sequencing standpoint there that's the that's what i'm looking for from a timing standpoint and obviously tiny back to the original question to allow the club head to pass the hands we're going to see i mean just we're going to very being very vague here almost almost too big there's a movement at the wrist, almost like a, a start set, let's cause it, just to keep the, uh, keep the language consistent here. So that's where we're first gonna feel like a little bit of movement in the wrist, almost like that set feel. And then as we move to the club shaft horizontal, we're obviously gonna feel a little bit more. So obviously it could be different for each player, how they feel it and how much they feel it. That's why I find that having visual cues, um, very precise positions um, that you can work towards so that every day um, you can go back to them and it's you have that certain level of consistency in the movement but it could feel different from day to day as well. Um, concepts stay constant but feels they can be changeable and can change every single day. So nice little 
reference point there for the takeaway as far as like club head past the hands, hands past the elbow, and that's where we are. And very, I would just to tie in one other movement there, I would say during that whole phase there, the belly button is staying very much with the hands in that phase. So we're moving the belly button in, in a nice relationship to the hands as we're working through that phase that, that through that phase there, I should say. Okay, so nice little relationship there. Now I just want to tie into that movement into how it improves club delivery. Because I'm sure there's a lot of viewers out there that are saying, well, why is that so important to the club delivery? So essentially in the golf swing, the movement at the wrist influences the movement at the elbow. And the movement at the elbow influences the movement at the shoulder. So if we move well through wrist, through the elbow, through the shoulder, that's gonna put us into a position at the top of backswing where the scap sits nicely on the back of the rib cage. And talking more specifically here, even through the trail arm. So if I want to apply force into the handle in downswing, I'm gonna need my shoulder position and the scap sitting well against the back of the rib cage to be able to apply force. So if, I can't, if I'm not putting force into the handle, then the club head is going to speed up and we're going to lose the relationship that we want in the, between the hands and the club from a timing standpoint in the downswing. So throughout backswing, if we can you know, move well through the wrist, allow the trail elbow to sit down or be in a position where the scap can be against the back of the rib cage, then when we move into downswing, we can put the force that we're looking for into the handle and have an opportunity there to improve the club release. And there's obviously a lot more that goes to it. We're looking just specifically at the movement of the wrist today. Um, so obviously here we're kind of ignoring the movement of um, pelvis, rib cage, neck. Uh, there's so much more that can go into this obviously. And for some players, this may not be where they need to look at to improve club release. But I do. there is a big connection there that I've seen um, sort of a chain through many different players. So one other cue I want to add to that, let's go a little bit further through backswing, and th this is more in a relation to the trail elbow. If a player does well with that sequence in the start there, and we say we're in this position here, now continuing to move through the core, through the belly button, as the lead arm gets parallel to the ground, the elbow is a level, okay? So we'd have to continue the nice rate of the wrist movement to allow the trail elbow to sit down so the elbow is a level. If I take out this movement here, you can see the influence that might have on the trail elbow and the trail shoulder. So the trail elbow starts to get higher and the elbow point more behind me, and that influences the movement at the shoulder, which in turn also influences the movement of the scap. So really important at this phase here, I see for many players, can we get the elbows level? And, there's gonna, and, the, and the set of the wrist is gonna influence us being able to achieve that. And that position there, I always encourage players, I mean, work on your takeaway, just invaluable to get really good in the start of the swing. But if you, if you can continue and get here, and then start hitting some three quarter shots and get really good with that kind of length of swing, that can be extremely helpful for players. Um, with most players that come in to see me, one thing behind the scenes I'm always trying to encourage them is to slow down with their movement and to see how they train their movement to be different from how they train their performance. So if we're working on training movement, then a lot of the time we, we might not even be hitting golf shots. It might be eyes closed. We're really feeling that position. It might be a case of, We've got a ball there, but we really don't care where it goes. So I'm set up here, club head past the hands, hands past the elbow, felt as though I moved quite nicely through my core there. And then I'm gonna to continue to turn with my belly button to my left arm's parallel to the ground. Got my elbows level, I'm checking the mirror in front of me there. And then from there, I mean, it's quite uncomfortable there because obviously uh, I feel as I'm looking at the ball from quite a different spot which is just good feedback. It doesn't mean that it's right, doesn't mean that it's wrong. It's just like, okay, that's, that's the way it looks when I do a good job. And then we can move through nice and easily. And this is why I'm a big fan of indoor nets as well, because it really does take the attention off what the ball did and it allows you to focus on what your movement 
felt like and improve your movement awareness rather than getting so tied to the awareness of what the ball did. So Dave, hope I ans answered your question there. I hope you got a couple of things you can kind of use to approach in your own game and um, hopefully along the way with that I was able to help a few other players as well.